Last week, I flew well over 60 hours, well over halfway around the world because this flight was on sale. After living on the boat for four years, I finally saw my sister, caught up my mum and my dad in Queensland, met my little nephew who's four years old, caught up some old friends and some patrons. Thanks guys, we love you. And then flew down to Adelaide to another mate's wedding where we saw more friends to finally, you guys remember Andrew and Robin? We saw them too. It's no yacht in the Caribbean, but you know, it's a house yeah. in the water. <laughs> Welcome guys to Sailing Sunday. Sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. A nice fire in Adelaide at Tilly's house. <laughs> we left the pot plant sitting on top of the fireplace. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Robin's gonna kill us. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Oh, I feel so bad because it was my, it was my suggestion to put the fire on. So guys, this right here is a prime example why boys should never be left at home unattended. Ryan's a super good captain and even managed to sail us safely across the Atlantic Ocean. But give him a couple glasses of wine and apparently it all goes out the window. There's pot one and there's pot two. <laughs> I think we're okay. There's nothing on top now. You can't even tell Teals. By the way, I threw another piece of wood in the fire. If you throw them in the bin, Robin might not know, eh? Here you go, buddy. Leftover pizza from last night. And a nice, cute little wine. <laughs> Cheers. There we go. Cheers, guys. We haven't burnt the house down. Petrochemicals never hurt <laughs> no one. These guys live in the Barossa Valley, which is a renowned wine producing region in Adelaide, South Australia. The area encompasses an array of high profile wineries. But while I've been away, there's been many local breweries opened up around the place. So we thought we'd go check them out and grab ourselves a beer. I was also lucky enough to be there for the Adelaide Fringe Festival, which is the second largest annual arts festival held in South Australia every year. Between February and March, the streets really come to life as more than 7,000 artists from around the world come to visit and take to hundreds of stages all over the city present shows for every taste. Then I could have some good friends, some more good mates. That's me scaring that little dude right there. Sorry, buddy. Then we took a few more quick photos for the memories in case they don't see him for another four years. Then met up with one of our patrons who used to be a photographer and gave us Sunday some good gifts to go towards our filming on YouTube. Thanks, Matt. You're a champion. All right, guys, let's take a quick little break from Ryan gallivanting all over the place, catching up with friends. And let's bring it back here to St. Martin, where I'm still on the boat, volunteering for SXM Pause. Today was a pretty easy day. It was quiet at the center. Basically, we're just doing the rounds, welcoming guests, making sure everything's clean and washing out all the kennels. It's been a lot of fun getting to know the ladies here at this center and meeting all of the dogs along the way. And also seeing a lot of the behind the scenes of how rescues run that most people probably don't even think about. But enough about me, let's get back to Queensland and check out what Ryan's getting up to now. Alright, so we're at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary on the Gold Coast here, so uh, yeah, just taking Harry out for the day with mum, dad and my sister, and it's epic here. Alright guys, I'm back in Queensland with my family once again, this time we're at the Crumbin Wildlife Sanctuary. This sanctuary is home to native mammals, reptiles, bird life and amphibians, as well as some exotic species. With strong support from locals and the emergence of ecotourism, it has allowed the sanctuary to thrive since 1947. Do you I can take him for you, buddy? <laughs> we took my little nephew Harry out for the day but I thought I'd bring you guys along with me just to check out some of the Australian native wildlife. And you remember Lisa from Coastline? I said this in our last video, you really have to go back and watch our journey from back in Turkey, because that was truly a once in a lifetime experience. It was really good to come back and catch up with these guys once again. And the boys, don't get me started, these little terrors have really grown up since Turkey. Afterwards, I caught up some more very special people. Not only some good friends, but our very first patrons. Thanks guys, 
You truly are amazing to kickstart us off on this journey of rescuing animals around the world. And meanwhile, while Ryan's out there meeting all you amazing people, I'm back here in St. Martin, heading on down to the post office to hopefully send off some of your sea glass pendant orders. Little did I know what was in store for me. Dealing with foreign post offices, and it's been since the Mediterranean, has been one of the most stressful parts of trying to run a small business. I stopped doing it for a while. As you guys know, I haven't sent any artwork or been talking about my artwork because it just became so stressful and so difficult to try and get anything out of these countries. And I came here thinking the postage system seemed to be fairly good, but obviously now I've experienced, and I'll explain to you guys what's happened later when I've calmed down, but I'm so angry right now. So I'm just gonna go try and deal with what I've got right now, recuperate what I can because it's such a mess and see if I can find a different service. But I just need to see if I can get back what's already left. So anyways, I need to calm down. <laughs> I need to go see if I can try and get my packages back because it's such a disaster. So long story short, the post office actually mailed my packages incorrectly. They didn't include a customs declaration, the package was too small, and they mailed it as if it was a letter, and that they may be lost forever and could not be returned back to St. Martin. So here I am spending my entire morning filling out 12 individual claim forms. <laughs> In French, might I add. <laughs> so I get there, everything filled out, ready to go, and the woman's like, oh, sorry, you can't use this. I'm like, excuse me? And I'm like, well, yeah. I sent off like 12 last week with you guys, this exact way. And she's like, well, that's wrong. And they're almost treating me like it's my fault. And I'm like, so I finally snapped. I was like, this is a post office, correct? They said, yes, but you can't send it like this. I said, that's why I'm paying you guys as a post office to help me send these packages off. That's not my job to know that. All right, so after I had my mini meltdown and a little bit of a pity party, I was able to get my postage sorted and back on track. And things quickly snapped back into perspective when I joined Diana to the airport to drop off the most beautiful rescue puppy who was heading on to his forever home. And to see such a positive outcome for him made my post office dramas seem very trivial. All right, guys, it's 4.30 in the morning and um, poor dad, Hey dad, thank you dad, I love yeah, you dad. That's okay. <laughs> dad. That's fine. No sweet. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Dad's taking me to the airport. So I'm flying down to Melbourne. I'm um, going for my B1, B2 visa. So while I'm here in Australia, I'm going to get my B1, B2 visa to um, yeah, sail into the US when I get back to the boat in the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to head up to the US this year. So I need this special visa and I've got to do an interview in Melbourne. Now I can get it in the Bahamas. And um, I'm getting word just recently that a few people have got it in Bahamas and they haven't waited very long to get their interviews. But generally around the world, the B1, B2 visa interviews are like six to 18 month waits. And here in Australia, in Melbourne, there was only like a three month wait. So I got it here. I don't really want to take that risk. So while I've got the interview booked in, I've already paid for it. It's all sorted. My sister works for the airline. So she's flying me standby down to Melbourne, um, super cheap. So I'm gonna go down to get this B1, B2 visa. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be all good once I get down there because I got like an hour and a half to get into the city to the US consulate. All right, let's hit this up. Let's go to the airport in Brisbane uh, and uh, fly down to Melbourne. Better go for my US interview, guys. Get my uh, US visa for Bahamas for when we leave the Bahamas. So, see how I go. All right, so while Ryan's sorting out his visa in Melbourne, let's take a little look at what it's been like here at the Sailing Sunday Zoo. Between Jackson, Oliver, Bear, and Marcel, things are getting pretty wild here on the boat but I will say it is absolute cuteness overload. And we're also lucky that even though Jackson can be a little bit crazy at times, when it comes to the puppies and kittens, he's entered Zen Master mode. I'm in Melbourne. <laughs> we caught up some patrons. We got Simon, what's up? Kat, hey you going? Hey. And uh, they've got a gift for, for Brittany and I. You guys yes, are amazing. So that one is for Brittany. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Simon and Kat, 
Thank you guys so much for your thoughtful gifts. We're so lucky to have some amazing patrons, and I can't wait to see Ryan running around in his little dinosaur undies. Uh, thank you. Oh, we will, we will. Thank you. But we got to cut to the chase here. Whose nachos are better? Nacho, the nachos to Brittany. All right, Brittany, your competition. The bar's high on this one. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right, guys, I got to jump in on this one and say I think you won this round. Despite my best efforts, I've never been able to get Ryan to eat avocado. So the fact you guys did is a win in my books. All right, Ryan, so you're eating uh, the best nachos yeah. in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm a little bit curious, so who cooks them better, Brittany or me? No, you definitely cook them better. Oh, Brittany yeah. does, Brittany does. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got your work cut out for you, Brittany, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. It really is moments like these I'll cherish forever, because putting your whole life on YouTube for the world to see and other people, in our case, the animals, in front of your own health and well-being is mentally extremely difficult at times. We're just so lucky and fortunate to have such an amazing online community with us on this journey. And I want to thank all of you for your support. And things were getting pretty exciting back here on the boat as well, as little Marcel had been adopted by a wonderful family in the US. Next step was to take him down to SXM Paws, get him fitted for his very first harness and leash, pack his little carry-on bag, and head on over to the airport to put him on his flight to his new life. Speaking of airports, here I am, this time at the Brisbane airport, about to fly out on an epic adventure, meeting up with a bunch of really awesome people who most of you will actually know. So don't miss out and hit that subscribe button because next month is gonna be absolutely incredible. If you guys really wanna support our journey further and get early access to all our videos, head over to Patreon and come join the crew. So what's next? off the couch <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs>